You write uncommonly fast, Mr. Darcy. You're mistaken. I write rather slowly. How many letters you must have occasion to write, Mr. Darcy? Letters of business, too. How odious, I should think them. It is fortunate, then, that they fall to my lot instead of yours. Do tell your sister that I long to see her. I've already told her once by her desire. Your pen. Let me mend your pen. Thank you, but I mend my own. How can you contrive to write so beautifully even? Pray tell your sister that I'm delighted to hear of her progress in music and let her know that I'm quite in raptures with her beautiful little design for a table. Perhaps you will give me leave to defer your raptures till I write again. At present, I have not room enough to do them justice. It's of no consequence. I shall see her soon. When my brother writes a letter, I marvel equally. He leaves out half the words and blots the rest. Well, my ideas flow so rapidly that I have not time to express them. My letters, as a consequence, mean nothing to their recipients. Your humility, Mr. Bingley, must disarm reproof. On the contrary, nothing is more deceitful than the appearance of humility. Bingley has just uttered an indirect boast. He is proud of his defects in writing, since they are consequent upon rapidity of thought. And the power of doing anything quickly is always much prized by its possessor, however imperfect the performance which may result. Mr. Darcy! Mr. Bingley is your friend. I assure you, Miss Bennet, if Mr. Darcy were not such a great, tall fellow, I should not pay him half so much deference. But I declare I do not know a more awful object than Darcy on particular occasions and in particular places, at his own house especially, and of a Sunday evening when he has nothing to do. I know why Mr. Darcy looks at me so. It is because he finds something in me more wrong and reprehensible, according to his idea of right, than anybody else in the room. Supposition does not pain me. I like him too little to care for his approbation. Do you not feel a great inclination, Miss Bennet, to seize upon this opportunity of dancing a reel? Miss Bennet, I'm quite... Oh, I heard you before, but I could not immediately determine what to say. You wanted me, I know, to say yes, so that you might have the pleasure of despising my taste. I have therefore made up my mind to tell you that I do not want to dance a reel at all. And now despise me if you dare. Indeed, I do not dare. I hope that after you're married to Miss Bennet, you'll give your mother-in-law a few hints as to the advantage of holding her tongue. And somehow I'll be able to cure the younger girls of running after officers. If I may mention so delicate a subject, endeavour to check this... this... impertinence that your lady possesses. Have you anything else to propose for my domestic felicity? Oh. Yes. Aunt and Uncle Phyllis, do let their portraits be placed in Pemberley. How well they will blend with your ancestors. As for your Elizabeth's picture, do not attempt to have it painted. For after all, what painter could possibly do justice to those beautiful eyes? It would not be easy indeed to catch their expression. But the colour and shape and the eyelashes so remarkably fine might be copied. I did not know you intended to walk. You used this abominably ill in running away without telling us you were coming out. This walk is not wide enough for our party. We had better go into the avenue. No, no, stay where you are. You are charmingly grouped and appear to uncommon advantage. The party would be spoilt by admitting a four. <laughs> Goodbye. 